What's going on? Welcome back to Trading Stocks. Today we're going to talk to you about Faraday Future. So this video is going to be a little bit different from my norm. So I'm not going to go over the data points, what shorts are doing and everything else like that. Rather, I wanted to, to address misinformation. A lot of people are, I think everyone's in agreement that the UAE is a very big deal for Faraday. I think everyone knows that. But you do see a lot of people, scary a lot of people in fact, saying that, you know what, I'm going to dime a hand when that deal comes, it comes, whether it be 2025 or whatever else. And I just wanted to, to kind of go over how that is very wrong. So I'm going to go over all the things that you need to know, but first make sure let's hit that thumbs up. And with that, let's get right to it. So starting off, I think it's fair to assume, like I said, just even management's been portraying the whole UAE kind of scenario as necessary, massively necessary. UAE is going to bring the financing for Faraday and then whoever their bridge partner between the US and um, China is going to ensure that they can deliver their vehicles, import their vehicles to the States because with the current tariffs, Faraday wouldn't last. Like there's no way in hell, even if they do a pivot to lower price vehicles, which can't just be done like that, it'll take time. Like nobody is going to be buying Faraday's with the current tariffs. So in essence, like Faraday needs both of those kind of things to happen. And like I said, a lot of people are just saying dime in hand and that the deal will come whatever it comes. I just want to, to kind of break it down. So like I said in my video yesterday, I've been covering Faraday on and off for a very long time. So I'm very familiar with their financials and even based on their last earnings, just looking over here. So this is all the transcripts. They did say one thing I would like to add in terms of shares outstanding and authorized shares. Effectively, all the shares authorized at our last shareholding meeting have already been issued and there will be no meaningful further issuance of shares unless we receive share shareholder approval to increase our authorized share count. A lot of people took that as a positive saying, yes, Faraday is not diluting. If you think about it though, the only negative side of that is they're not really telling the truth. It's like me being broke and just saying, you know what? I'm not going to spend any more money. It's like, well, what is really the case? Because if we look over here based on this, because uh, their previous uh, authorized shares. So in case you guys don't know, there's authorized shares and then outstanding shares. Authorized shares was this right here. So it was 1.3 billion. And then they recently did a reverse stock split that adjusted that. So right now, the actual uh, authorized shares is 463 million. Based on their last earnings, they did say as of May 17th, 2024, there was 439 million. Uh, shares outstanding. So they're basically at that limit. And the reason why they can't use that is because of the notes. So if we go back over here, basically in the same paragraph it says beyond 2023, we brought in additional capital through convertible notes. And again, I did bring this up. A lot of people said, no, they didn't, blah, blah, blah. Technically it says beyond 2023. So meaning in 2024, they did bring in additional capital through convertible notes. And I've already done, well, it was a live stream, but I did kind of a demonstration on how damaging these convertible notes are. And I do know firsthand by covering many other stocks that have these toxic kind of convertible notes because in essence, the lower the stock price, the more shares that are issued. So they're very, very damaging, especially with Faraday going down to like four cents uh, at the low, like these convertible notes and the holders just benefited like a bandit. Plus, there's a lot of stipulations in there, not restricting a lot of those entities to short. So obviously you can kind of see how damaging and how stupid this is because whoever is a convertible note holder can easily just short the stock, causing the stock price to go lower, and then thus getting more shares of that. And that is how you get that rinse and repeat cycle. So I think Faraday has been slammed quite significantly. A lot of people don't really understand why, because shorts know that there's these convertible notes, they're shorting it, the holders possibly are even shorting it, and then converting, which is dilution, causing the stock price to go down. In essence, that's kind of what has happened over the last year and a half. So in case you are new to Faraday, I gave you a quick rundown on that. But 
As you can kind of see based on this, it shows that they're still leaning on these convertible notes and that essentially they are at their cap. So if we quickly go over to their financials and just on a side note, I know this does come off as FUD, but I just wanted to clear the air. As I've said very openly, I like the fact that Faraday has a lot of hype. It's really given management hope, but prior to that, their day-to-day -day operations, management did largely give up. Just obviously on an FYI, but based on their last earnings, going over here, they had 1.9 million in cash and cash equivalents. Going over here on a quarter over quarter basis, they're basically burning around 37.8 million. The last quarter was relatively low, but 37.8 million just from operations. And they haven't really ramped up yet. So that kind of puts it in comparison to what could happen. But you guys don't have to be geniuses to figure out 1.9 million versus how much they're burning through. The math isn't mathing. And so this is even as of December the 20 or December 2023. We are now in July. They have yet to submit their Q1 earnings. And now Q2 is going to be due soon too. Um, so yeah, this is when I say that they need the UAE deal, they need the UAE deal. And if you're thinking that Faraday is going to last up until 2025 without some other external partnership, some external funding, then definitely that's where things get very bad. But on a side note, one thing that could really help Faraday at least kick the can down for them to figure something out if the UAE falls through, they can kind of look for another entity out there is during the upcoming shareholder meeting, they are kind of voting on or will be voting on to raise the count, the authorized share count. So that again, gives Faraday some room to essentially dilute, get money in, and then that way they can hopefully live to fight another day. And uh, so, yeah, I think that is definitely a very, very big must and that it has to pass during the shareholder meeting. But at the same time, I know a lot of you guys are saying that you're going to dime in hand, but this is also why institutions will not be buying into Faraday because if they know excessive amounts of dilution are going to be occurring, they are not going to be investing. And so, like I've said, I think given the circumstances, institutions are just avoiding Faraday. And right now, though, like you definitely do need a very good catalyst. And those two catalysts right now are the UAE deal as well as that bridging to kind of come sooner rather than later, ASAP if possible. And plus, on a side note, um, definitely, I think that whole interview with Omar, I know I did say that, uh, I brought that up in my video yesterday. Some people commented saying that, well, they've already disclosed that they can't bring up any new information. I've done interviews with CEOs and they did bring up new information. All you have to do is submit a 8K and there you have it. Then company can bring up anything that they see fit, even if it is non-public information. But as long as they submit that 8K, then now that is public information. So yeah, in essence, things could be said. You just, it's going to be the discussions between Omar and Faraday in the early stages, just to say, hey, you know what? We need a catalyst. Like, I don't know, you guys need to do whatever you need to do on your end, but you guys need to put something forward. So I think there's a lot of good opportunity for that interview. And I think I actually did even see Omar uh, gave a comment in that video as well. So shout out to Omar once again. He's uh, definitely a very good asset to Faraday. And so I think that interview alongside what I mentioned about those two things are absolutely key in order for Faraday to succeed. And keep in mind, this is where, not to reference Tesla, but what happened with Tesla, they were getting slammed massively by shorts in their early stages. But what they did is they just said, fuck you shorts, we're gonna get the job done. And obviously by increasing your profits, kind of eventually just getting the damn job done, shorts naturally leave. So I think that might happen with Faraday once their operations does really step up and moves in the right direction. So let me know your thoughts on Faraday. Hopefully this wasn't too much FUD for you in one video. My apologies. If so, I'm not a hedgy, like I said, just trying to spread some 
knowledge, some wealth of uh, whatever else. So don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. One final thing, take advantage of this promo. Simply sign up for a new account, throw $100 at it, and they give you five free stocks. Each stock is valued up to $2,000. Kick-ass deal, link in the description below, and also the comments. With all that said, appreciate all of you watching.